Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. Joining me once again is this month's guest programmer, man known as today's master of horror, filmmaker John Carpenter. Welcome back, John. Glad to be here. Nice to have you here. Now, so far tonight, we've been on a roll with John, bringing us some of his favorite fright films, but the next pick is, surprise, something entirely different. The Western was directed by Howard Hawks back in 1959. Stars John Wayne, Dean Martin, Angie Dickinson, and Ricky Nelson. It's Rio Bravo. Now, when I saw this on your list, I was really surprised. All these horror films, and all of a sudden, a Western. And then earlier, you said that that was kind of your original intent, was to to do westerns, but they weren't in favor, so you kind of got into the line. But why of all the westerns did you pick this one? Well, I have to go back again to a 10-year-old kid going to the movies on Saturday afternoon in downtown Bowling Green, and there was Rio Bravo. And I, I will never forget the, the effect of seeing that film. And I went again. They held over Rio Bravo in my small town for another yeah. week, and I went back again. And then later, of course, in film school, again, I revisited this, knowing more about Howard Hawks. And I love this Western. I love it. I love everything. Well, why do you about think it. as a kid this one particularly grabbed you so much? It's a really good question. I think because part of, of Hawks' drive as a creator was groups of people who have to survive under pressure. And literally, this was the sheriff, John Wayne his drunken deputy, Dean Martin, Walter Brennan, unbelievable character actor, really funny. Again, another, uh, the jailer. And they had to survive inside this jail against forces of evil outside. It's something that appealed a great deal to mm -hmm. me, not just in Westerns, but that, that general plot. I've remade that a hundred times myself as a horror film, so. This plot? This plot, really? oh yeah. People trapped someplace, and outside is the forces of evil are gonna come and get them. But there was, uh, there, there was the measure of what a professional is and does in this film. Mm -hmm. That was what Howard Hawks was about a lot. Are you good enough, John Wayne says to Dean Martin at one point, are you good enough to do the job? Are, are you competent enough? Are you up to it? Or have you let the demons that bother you drag you down? Plus, it has this incredible score by Dimitri Tiomkin. Right who invented the Degueo. Now, the Degueo is a song played at the Alamo. But the Degueo, in reality, is, is very different than what they gave us in the movie. That was all created by T. Umpkin. And Wayne loved it so much, he used it again in the Alamo. So the same beautiful tune. And the movie just turns into fun at the end when they're, they're shooting at the bad guys. Walter Brennan is irresistible. And who can't love Ricky Nelson is a gunfighter. I mean, it's just amazing. And Angie Dickinson. Oh, yes. And, and Hawks <laughs> reprieved a lot of the scenes he did in To Have and Have Not. Right. In Rio Bravo, the hotel corridor scenes and the banter between Wayne and Dickinson. Right. Just brilliant. And didn't he remake it all together? He with remade John Wayne it. again? He did it three times. He yes. made the same film three times. The yes. others were? Um, uh, there was Rio Bravo, El Dorado. El Dorado, yes. And Rio Lobo was the yes. third. So he liked it as too. He did. Well, you set that up very well. It is a terrific movie. Here it is with the cast that does include also Ward Bond, chosen for us by this month's guest programmer, writer and director John Carpenter. Here's Rio Bravo. Wonderful film. And I'm here with the man who selected it for us is this month's guest programmer, writer and director John Carpenter. John's been with me all evening discussing some of his favorite films. This is such a good movie. It really is. It rolls right along and so entertaining. It's so much fun. Too. Yeah. The casting is great. Now, how, how important to you is casting, do you think, in a film? It's huge. And it's essential because these are the people who are going to portray the characters. So yeah. you have to be very careful and very lucky when you cast. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you ever meet Howard Hawks? I did. Did I he did. come to your to USC when you were there? Hawks came to USC and spoke to us, and I met him afterwards. He was a very intimidating character. He could make you feel like, uh, <laughs> he could make you feel like you weren't worthy of speaking to him. Yes. So I, I was really scared. So I kind of came up timidly, Mr. Hawks, I'm a big fan. I asked him about the thing, and he talked a little bit about Christianity, but he was, uh, he was a storyteller and he kept a lot of his secrets hidden. What he told you was, were things that he made up that he wanted you to think. I see. 
So you Re couldn't... Recreating his history. That's correct. And he really sort of made it up at one point and would tell the same stories over and over again. But you had to look a little closer in his films, mm -hmm. really, to find out the truth of what was mm -hmm. going on. And I did. You pointed out something I hadn't really thought about. Tell you pointed out how many of his films are about camaraderie between men in groups like Only Angels Have Wings and Gunga Dean and all those movies. That's, that's kind of a basic theme. A his. love story between men. Yeah. And then uh, the woman who's trying to get into the group. Right. And how does she deal with, with getting her right. out? If you look at Only Angels Have Wings, and then you go to Hatari, right? And a giant, giant years separation. You can see essentially these are themes that he's dealing with over and over mm. again. in his adventure movies. Mm. In his comedies, he's really de dealing with the breakdown <laughs> between men and women of civilization. So he humiliates his leading man, especially Cary Grant. He dresses him in nightgowns and puts him in terrible situations. Oh, it's a male ward ride. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yes. And, oh, and uh, bring up baby you're talking absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so it's two sides of, of modern, modern life, mm -hmm. essentially. I think that's why I love Hawk so much. He's a modern director. Mm -hmm. Well, we're proud of having you here as a guest programmer. Thanks so much, John. Well, thank you. It's delightful to be here. Thanks. Well, you've been a good one. And come back anytime. I'm ready. You're more than welcome. OK. Well, we're going to say goodbye to John right now, but you know how it is on TCM. There's always a movie. And shown as a movie should always be seen, uncut and commercial free. The only way to see a film. So stick around. We have another one on its way.